Hello, and welcome to Spine Talks at the Mayo Clinic. Today we're going to discuss the subject of spondylolisthesis. My name is Brett Friedman, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for joining us. We'll cover the topic of spondylolisthesis over a series of four episodes, each about five minutes in length. In this episode, I will describe what spondylolisthesis is. In subsequent episodes, we'll cover other key points like how common it is, what are the symptoms, how is it diagnosed, how is it treated, and what is the prognosis. The term spondylolisthesis comes from two Greek roots, spondylo, which means spine, and listhesis, which means slippage. Spondylolisthesis is exactly what the name implies. It occurs when one of the spinal vertebrae slips forward, backwards, or sideways in relationship to the vertebra below it. Recall from previous health or anatomy classes that the spine is made up from different bones called vertebrae. The seven ones in your neck are called cervical, the 12 ones in your chest are called thoracic, and the five vertebrae at the bottom of your spine are called lumbar. While spondylolisthesis can occur anywhere in the spine, we will focus our discussion on spondylolisthesis occurring in the lower section of the spine, known as the lumbar spine. I mentioned that the term spondylolisthesis can be used to describe slippage of the spine in any direction, but we'll only talk about when the slip occurs forward, called anterolisthesis, meaning the spine has slipped anteriorly. There are several reasons why the spine will slip. The two most common are the two that we'll discuss. These are termed lytic spondylolisthesis and degenerative spondylolisthesis. In lytic spondylolisthesis, the spine slips because little sections of the bone on the back of the spine, called the pars interarticularis, have cracked or malformed. This releases the vertebra, especially at the bottom of the spine, where the spine has a downward slope. The L5 vertebra, which is the lowest lumbar vertebra, is the most common site of a pars defect. We call this type of slippage a lytic spondylolisthesis because the Greek root lysis means to break. So a lytic spondylolisthesis occurs when the pars breaks and the spine slips. We name the spondylolisthesis for the vertebra that has slipped and the one directly below it. So the most common level for a lytic spondylolisthesis is L5-S1. The other common type of spondylolisthesis is called degenerative spondylolisthesis. It typically affects people who are 50 to 60 years of age or older. This type of slip occurs not because there are cracks in the pars, but rather it's due to the changes that occur in the spine as it ages and wears down. In some folks, as the discs and the spine age, the vertebrae at the end of the spine slip down the slope of the spine. This most commonly occurs at the L4-5 level, and this type is more common in women than men. The primary reason for this slippage is that the shape of the spinal column and the alignment of the vertebrae are supported by ligaments and the discs which lie between each vertebra. As the discs wear down, the ligaments get loose and the vertebra can start to move. In addition, there are two small joints at the back of the spine called facet joints. If these have a vertical shape or orientation, it's easier for slippage to occur. Likewise, when these joints get very worn down, they are less able to prevent slippage. In addition, the abnormal motion that occurs at these joints can result in facet cysts, which can pinch the nerves and produce leg symptoms. Since degeneration of the spine allows the slippage to occur, we call this type of slippage degenerative spondylolisthesis. In summary, spondylolisthesis is a slippage of one spinal vertebrae on top of another. The two most common types of spondylolisthesis are lytic spondylolisthesis and degenerative spondylolisthesis. These slips tend to occur at the lower end of the lumbar spine. Lytic types occur earlier in life, while degenerative types take decades to develop. Now that we've described what spondylolisthesis is, I hope you'll join us for episode two in the series, in which we'll describe how common it is. Again, I'm Dr. Brett Friedman of the Mayo Clinic, Department of Orthopedic Surgery, and it's been a pleasure spending this time together with you. I really appreciate your willingness to listen to this spine talk. If after reviewing all the episodes in this series, you have additional questions or would like to request an appointment to be seen at the Mayo Clinic for your spinal condition, 
please use the information displayed on the screen to contact us. Thank you and be well.